send in the Scots. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down the top 10 actors you totally forgot were Scottish. Not me, never. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're only looking at actors who were born in Scotland, but for various reasons, their Scottish background is often forgotten. Performers such as Isla Fisher, who was born elsewhere but to Scottish parents, aren't included today. Number 10, Ian Glenn. First up, an actor who's probably best known for two drastically different roles. Ian Glenn is both Sir Jorah Mormont in Game of Thrones and Sir Richard Carlyle in Downton Abbey. Lady Grant, my responsibility is to my investors. I need to keep my readership up. I leave the public spirits to government propaganda. And while those two polar opposite characters should really be subject to some kind of ultra kooky crossover show by now, they're both part of the reason you might not know that Glenn is Scottish. I've forfeited the right to claim this song. It's yours. Born in Edinburgh, he lived there for most of his life until he moved to London after university to study acting, and so started the supposed downfall of his Scottish accent, which is pretty much non-existent now in his major teleparts. Oh, Number 9, Armando Iannucci. Though usually known for his writing and directing credits, Yanucci has also done some small bits of comedy and acting. Aye, oh, aye, oh, aye, Derby County. He created the British comedy series The Thick of It, as well as co-creating The Day to Day and I'm Alan Partridge, and was even given his own comedy show, The Armando Yanucci Shows, on Channel 4. What about this? We all know what this is. Fire! Both of his parents are Italian, but Yanucci was born and raised in Glasgow, living close to Doctor Who star Peter Capaldi, who later went on to play Malcolm Tucker in the thick of it. It is a small world. It starts to break down round about here, where it goes T-A, don't piss it away. Number 8, Shirley Henderson. You may not instantly recognise her name, but you've most definitely seen her face, especially if you're a Harry Potter fan. <laughs> But if the sad, whiny, moaning Myrtle doesn't register on your radar, Henderson was also Jude in the Bridget Jones films, and she has appeared in cult favourites like 24 Hour Party People and A Cock and Bull Story. Ooh, Henderson was born in Forest Morrie and grew up in King Cardin Fife, moving to London to study music and drama at 17 in 1983, which means she was a perhaps surprising 37 years old when she portrayed 14 year old Myrtle in the Chamber of Secrets. <laughs> Number 7, John Barrowman. The American accent implies otherwise, but the ever enthusiastic John Barrowman is surprisingly Scottish. Captain Jack Harkness, 133 Squadron, Royal Air Force, American Volunteer. Liar. Born in Glasgow, he lived there with his family until he was eight, when they moved to the US, where Barrowman adopted his stateside accent after his schoolmates made fun of his Scottish tone. You're serious? Luckily for us, he eventually made his way back to the UK, where he started his career on London's West End. Of course, he has since worked on British television and was famously cast as Captain Jack Harkness in Doctor Who and the sci-fi show's spin-off series, Torchwood. It's not my name. It is. Number 6, James McAvoy. This one largely depends on which of James McAvoy's movies you've seen, and which you haven't. If, for example, you know him best for his role as Robbie Turner in Atonement, his Scottish heritage might just have passed you by. Could you run ahead and give this to see? I feel a bit of a fool handing it over myself. McAvoy made quite a name for himself, especially in his early career, for playing period drama Englishmen or Americans. I'm so sorry. But he has also shown his national pride in plenty of interviews and acceptance speeches, including at the 2013 British Independent Film Awards, when he won for filth and compared his elation to if Scotland ever won the World Cup. Number 5, David Tennant. He is hidden in plain sight as the 10th Doctor himself and Marvel's malevolent Kilgrave. Oh, I guess that makes me the winner. Born David John MacDonald, Tennant was raised in Ralston, Renfrewshire, relocating from Bathgate, West Lothian. But his definitely Scottish background doesn't always shine through in the accents he employs, and he's often more likely to pass as English in his acting roles, whether he's delivering Shakespearean soliloquies or rattling through some time-travel techno-bubble. Mind you, I quite like hope. 
hopes a good emotion. In interviews enjoying the backstage stuff, however, the brogue is back in full force. You're Scottish, I know you're checking for those special offers. Oh, careful. That yeah. was low. Go on, go on. Number four, Brian Cox. No, not the cheeky mop top professor of science, we're talking the celebrated thespian Brian Cox, the original Hannibal Lecter, and a face similar to anyone who's ever watched Super Troopers. We keep up these low numbers, you can bet your sweet butts. We're gonna get the big, ugly axe. Cox's CV is a never-ending list of film, television, radio, and even video game credits, as well as numerous awards and nominations. Chapter. Although he doesn't seem to have any hint of a Scottish accent nowadays and now lives in New York City, he was born and raised in Dundee until he moved to London to study acting later in life. Even so, I prefer to surrender to a fellow airman. Number three, Alan Cumming. Not only has he worked his way through theatre, television and film, Alan Cumming has also branched out into behind-the-scenes roles, writing and even singing. I thought I'd post it on the internet, no? Now residing in Manhattan and holding dual US-UK citizenship, Cumming was born in Aberfeldy, Perthshire and was raised in Angus, where he lived near Carnoustie on Scotland's east coast. Can you hear what they're saying? I could take a closer look. He rarely uses his natural accent in acting roles, but if you do catch it, you may still hear a slight Scottish inflection. He even supports the Scottish Youth Theatre, which might eventually stop so many Scottish actors moving to London to study. Yes! I am invincible! Number 2. Robbie Coltrane Best known for playing lovable half-giant Hagrid in the Harry Potter films, Robbie Coltrane is Scottish through and through. Your train leaves in 10 minutes. Here's your ticket. And stick to it, Harry. That's very important. Stick to your ticket. Born in Rutherglen, South Lanarkshire, Coltrane, born Macmillan, was educated in Perthshire, later Glasgow, and finally at the University of Edinburgh. In Glasgow, Coltrane was often ridiculed at school for having a posh accent, which he toned down afterwards. I've got eight items! But given that he so rarely plays Scottish characters and is instead better known for roles like the Russian gangster Valentin Tsiolkovsky in the Bond films, the truth of Robbie's lineage often goes unnoticed. I thought you were the one giving her the business. Number 1. Laura Fraser If you've ever seen Breaking Bad or its spin-off Better Call Saul, you'll know Laura Fraser as mother of meth Lydia Rodart Quayle. I appreciate you making every possible effort because as you know, my buyers expect a certain threshold. She's also famous for her performances as Dor in Neverwhere and Kate in A Knight's Tale, but because of her all-American role alongside Brian Cranston and co, her Scottishness sometimes slips by. Another A-grade actor born and raised in Glasgow, where she studied dramatic arts, she actually still lives in Scotland, unlike a lot of today's other entries. It's a long way from there to Texas, where Breaking Bad's Lydia is based, but she makes the switch to sensational effect. You want to talk methylamine? Then tell your partner to stop threatening me, and let's talk. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.